Hi, I'm Jim Linnell. I'm a leather craftsman from Texas, USA, and I'd like to show you a few things that you can do with leather. Here's an example of some of the things I'd like to show you. Here at Uptrack Studio, I teach a lot of classes on how to do leatherworking. In fact, I've been teaching leatherwork for over 50 years now. And today I'd like to show you a little bit about how we would make a feather out of leather. I've got a piece of 2-3 ounce uh, veg tan cowhide here, and uh, I'm going to dampen it down. This is the casing process. This softens up the, the surface of the leather and allows us to start making some impressions in I'm going to use a, a stylus here and just lightly trace the quill uh, that runs up the middle of the feather. But that's what I need for starters, is just a, a rough outline of, of what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to cut that outline into the leather, and I'm going to use my swivel knife to do that. The goal here at this stage is not to cut through the leather, I'm just going to cut this outline into the leather. You make the cuts by angling the knife away from you a little bit on the top, and then by pulling it towards you, you make the cuts into the leather. And I'm going to bevel this quill um, and uh, to make it stand out a little bit. And then we are ready to put the rest of the texture on there. And the rest of that texture is done with another swivel knife. Um, but this one's got a special blade in it. It is a texturing tool. It's not really a knife. It doesn't really cut um, the, the leather, but it does leave uh, a bunch of parallel lines. And so what I'm doing now is I'm running this uh, at that same kind of an angle that that beveler tool started to give me all the way to the edge of the feather. And I, I'm running it all the way out to the edge, out, out past the, the line that I cut into the leather. We're gonna use a modeling spoon and do one more thing here to this quill, and I'm rounding off that edge. That quill is actually round. It's not a square shape on a feather, so uh, all I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm using the modeling spoon to kind of round that off. It's still standing up as tall as it was, but it's rounded off now, so it gives a little more natural look. And then next, we're going to cut it uh, loose from this piece of leather. We're gonna totally cut it out of there. And for that, I'm going to use a scalpel. That, uh, and I, what I want you to notice here is how much of an angle I have my, my scalpel at as I'm cutting. I'm not cutting straight down into it. I'm actually cutting at a bit of a, a fairly flat angle. And what that does is it kind of gives the edge of this feather, uh, well, a feather edge. It gives it a very, very thin edge. Okay, so we've got our feather cut away from the rest of it, so we have just the feather here now. Now we're ready to, to start uh, bringing it to shape. So what I'm doing right now is I'm cutting a bunch of really, really narrow lines so that I can get this kind of a roughed up edge at the bottom. All right, we got those loose ends there. One more thing we need to do to make this thing look kind of natural is some separations in here. I told you we were going to mess up this edge a little bit. Well, not mess it up, but we're going to make that edge look kind of uh, rough. We'll let that kind of sit up like that. We don't want it to dry flat. We don't want it to, we want it to dry like that. The next, next step with this feather is we need to put a stiffener on it. We want it to dry somewhat rigid, and, and to do that I'm going to use a an acrylic finish here. It's a matte finish. It dries with a matte sort of a, of a finish to it. I like that. I'm going to put it on both sides of this piece of leather. I want it to almost be saturated all the way through. Put that bend in it and then we need to we need to prop it up somewheres so that it will dry in that position and you know what a mallet works pretty good for that. It's got just a little bit of a bow. I'll just lean it, lay it over the top like that and we'll just let it dry. Now that our feather has dried out, you can see that it's, it's rigid and wants to hold its shape. We're now ready to add some color to it and make it uh, look really lifelike. So what I'm going to use is acrylic paint. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put a pretty liberal, liberal coat on there. We want to make sure that we have it on both the front and the back. 
I don't want to put it on so heavy that I cover up all of that texture that we put on there. I'm just using a large brush so I can get it on fairly evenly. Make sure that you get it on the edges. And as we get out toward the tip, we're going to, the tip of this is going to be uh, a dark brown color. So, and one of the things we want to be careful not to do here is uh, we don't want to like put a real distinct line on here where the brown ends and the, and the white or the ivory begins. We will, we will start to stipple. I'm running that kind of a texture alongside of the quill and, and uh, just kind of doing it randomly um, along the edge. And again, I don't want it real solid. I don't want to see a distinct line where one color ends and the other begins. For example, on the front here, which is pretty well dry, I'm going to take another brush and I'm going to use uh, this ivory now and put some ivory on this quill. And that's pretty much the process of, of painting one of these, at, with, at least with this, these colors. It's pretty simple. What would you do with a feather like this? Well, you can use that for all sorts of things. You can do, make jewelry out of it. You can use it for wall hangings. You can use it for um, just a, a variety of things. We've now done a feather out of leather. Let me show you how some of the classic floral carving is done. Um, obviously this piece of leather was already cased. I had it down here doing all of my tracing and such. When we're cutting this design into the leather, we're going to use all of those same basic rules that uh, we do with cutting any design in. We're going to try to cut about one third the thickness of the leather. When we do the uh, the cutting in here we're going to use a little lighter pressure we only want to lightly cut these and this is one of the general rules again about um, doing more detailed designs uh, we don't always accomplish depth in our carving by how deep we cut a lot of times that depth is created by how we utilize the tools creating the different textures and uh, and then of course the dyes and finishes that we use when we finish this. What's important right now is we, we have to have good clean lines to follow with the, the stamping tools and uh, that means you got to have good clean lines traced onto the leather so you can cut those. I'm going to uh, put a little bit of moisture on here uh, and let that start to dry back again and we'll be ready to start with, uh, with some pear shading. As you can see, our leather's starting to dry back to its original color, so I'm going to start uh, doing the pear shading. The pear shading, what we want to do or accomplish with the pear shader is we want to start to add some of the three dimension to this design. This is how we get what some of the contour and some of the shape to the, to the flower petals um, is by having um, some of it raised and some of it uh, with, with some depth to it. What we want to do with the pear shader is to create three dimension. We want to start to add some, what looks to be some waves, some ripples running across the uh, those petals. When you're doing the pear shading, you are actually sculpturing the leather. You're trying to add uh, three dimension to them. You want to make them look like they have some contour and some shape. So once we have the shading accomplished, we're ready to go on to beveling. And uh, one of the things about beveling is, for the most part, creates the rose. That it is the most important of the stamping steps. So we'll, we'll do that here. So we're gonna start right in the center. This is the most difficult part of doing a rose is getting this beveling correct. I'm beveling as deeply as I cut, but remember, I did not cut as deep here. I cut um, a, a lot lighter, so, uh, but I am getting you know as much depth as that cut allows me to. Right here on the front, we've got um, a couple of uh, petals that actually kind of roll back and face toward us. We have, we call them turnbacks. Again, we're gonna bevel each one of these lines as deeply as it was cut. The technique of using the beveler is for the most part like using the pear shader. You know, I'm holding it with that same basic grip so that it's 
just lightly touching the leather and then as I tap it, it's kind of again bouncing along. It's just touching leather so it's not sitting in a hole after it bounces back up. It's sitting back on the surface of the leather. Now that I have all of the beveling completed, and the next thing that I like to do at this stage is to go ahead and lift these uh, pedals using uh, what I call pedal lifters. This is a knife now. It's, it's got a very sharp cutting edge. As I'm using it, I'm actually pushing under, but the reason I like this over the others is once I get cut underneath, I'm actually going to lift the leather. You see, I'm actually picking up the leather with, with the leverage that I have with this. What I'm doing here is I'm not actually cutting down deeper into the leather. When we beveled and, and around the outside here, Remember, we bevel as deeply as we cut. So if I cut a third of the thickness of this piece of leather and I beveled that deep, what I'm doing then is starting at the bottom of that bevel and I'm cutting underneath the surface of the leather. I'm not cutting down deeper, I'm just cutting straight in underneath. One more thing, and I'm just gonna show you all of this here right now. What I'm gonna do is, I like to put a texture actually on these stems and I'll use the hair blade to do that. And, and what I'll do is, very lightly, I'm just adding the texture of the hair blade. I'm not actually cutting anything, but I'm gonna add the texture of the hair blade and have it running down the, these, uh, these long vines. Okay, I'm at the backgrounding step now. I'm actually using this tool, and I'm taking the point of it and actually reaching into each one of those cuts that I made in the edges of these leaves and it actually ends up opening them up a little bit more. It puts a texture down inside of that cut. You see how um, by lifting these edges and, and, and now with this contrasting background next to it, boy, those rolls in the edges of these leaves and uh, on the flower petals really stand out. The, the secret to doing this, it doesn't matter how neat of things I can do, you don't actually learn any of this stuff until you pick up the tools and start using them and start doing the leather work yourself. You need to figure out how to cut, you need to figure out how to make your knife work, you need to figure out how to bevel, all those things. And the only way you ever learn that is by practicing it. So there's a lot more leather work to be done. Mm -hmm.